my DCC base station got censored. Details inside. Hi, I'm Tom Kovichak, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And I've been showing you sensors on different things on JMRI. So now it's time to show you how to do sensors with DCC++. And you can see right here, I have a SunFounder Mega. I have a... DF robot sensor shield, which makes it a little bit easier to put the sensors on through these three pin harnesses. I also have some relays on there. And I have a Deke robot motor shield, which is identical to the Arduino motor shield. Now, I really didn't think that it was an issue finding out how to put that sensors on the DCC++ until I had someone asked me a question about it that they were really stumped and so i figured i'd let you know how to hook them up now there's two different ways to hook it up there's a conventional way where greg berman shows in his sketch how to do it and you could also do it through jmri and i'm going to show you both ways I'm going to split this up into two videos. The first way, I'm going to show you how it's done in the DCC++ base station. And in the second video, I'm going to show you how to do it in JMRI. I don't want to make this too long of a video. It's going to be over 20-some minutes if I keep it all in one video. So I'm going to split it up for you. Now, JMRI might be the little easier way but if you like to mess with coding and there's no coding involved because what you're actually doing is you're actually storing the information on the mega 2560 instead of in the code to give you a sense of the items i'm using on here i'm using a mega which is a sun founder mega this right here is a df robot sensor shield and it has a switch on here where you could use the power from the Mega or switch it over to where you could use external power for all your sensors. And here is the motor shield. It's a DF robot motor shield. I have some modules right here that are relay modules from DF robot. And these are the sensors that I always use. And I have them on female to female DuPont connectors on the pins on the shield and I'm going to give you a close up of what that looks like. And as you can see, all the pins, almost all the pins are outside of where the motor shield will sit, except for these pins right here. But these pins are actually being used by the motor shield. Now let me show you what a regular shield looks like for Omega. Now, I purchased a, a different brand. This is a real cheap brand. The, I think I got two of them for the same price as a DF Robot one. But you'll, you can see I don't have any headers where I could plug another shield up on top. So that makes this one the, the one that has to be up on top. And you'll notice that the pins go all the way across. So I can't put a shield up on top of this one here. I've had this DF robot one for a while because I'm using that on another project also. So let's see how we can do this easily. The first way I'm going to show you is through Greg Berman's way in the sketch. You may be familiar with this page here. This is the main page of the DCC++ page. And if you ever had to make any changes on there for the motor shield, if you were using the Palula motor shield, you would have changed this zero to the one. But I'm gonna show you a couple of other things that can be changed on here as far as the accessories. If you wanna put a turnout in here or as many turnouts as you could fit on here, you could use it with the T command. You would give it an ID number and then you would give it the accessory and that's the DCC decoder number. 
and sub address if you have a sub address for it. And another place that you would add something to it is in the outputs right here. Like I have on mine, I have relays on there, but you can also put LEDs on there. So you use the command Z with the ID, the pin number, and I flag, which is explained down here, and I'll explain that a little bit later. But we're gonna right now we're gonna talk about the sensor page. And all we have to do is add an S, an ID, a pin, and a pull-up. We're going to use the same ID as the pin number. So we're going to start out with pin 15. So it's going to be S, a space, 15, space, 15, a space. And then we're going to use zero for the pull-up because down here it shows one if you're using the internal pull-up and zero if you don't use it. So it'll be S, 15, 15, zero with spaces in between those characters. And anytime you start up your base station and open up your serial monitor, you'll see this right here. And at the end of the date and time when it was installed on your device, it'll show no serial right now. Now, once we add items to it, those items will show up after this no serial. So what we wanna do, we're, we'll clear this right here We'll bring this up right here and I'll add the first four items starting off with 15. We'll do 15, 16, 17, and 18. So there we go with the first four items in there, the sensors 15, 16, 17, and 18. And what we'll do is we'll enter it in to the EEPROM with the E command. And you'll see that it says E040. Now the zero is the turnouts, the four is the sensors, and the other zero is the outputs. So what we'll do now is we'll enter the outputs and we'll go over to the output page. Output CPP. And you'll see basically the same thing, Z, the ID, the pin, and the I flag. Now the I flag has three entries into it. Forward operation, which means active high, inactive low, or inverted operation, active low, active high. So we're gonna put in one in the first one, so because it's an active low relay. And the I flag bit one, state of pin restored to power up at either active or inactive depending on state before power down. State of pin set to inactive with first created. And then one state of pin set on power up or when first created to either active and inactive depending on flag in bit two. So if we use bit two, zero, state of pin set to inactive upon power up and one state of state of pin set to active upon power up. So we're going to do one, one, and one. And we'll see what that looks like there. And we're going to put those on pins. I have to take a look at this to see where I have the relays. I have it on 41 and 43, but we'll do three of them. Let me clear this down here so we can get a new page of it. Okay, so it took the first one.
just to see if it'll do two at a time. And yes, it does two at a time. And you'll see it says zero, four, three. So when I put in the Z command, it shows up 41, 41, 10, 42, 42, 10, and 43, 43, 10. That's as far as we're going to go today. Coming up in the next video, I'm going to show you how we do it in JMRI. So until then, we'll see ya. That's as far as we're going to go today. Okay. <laughs> That's as far as we're going to go today. And what was I going to say? Holy moly.